Okay, in this video we're going to go through the process of finding the derivatives of um, the inverse trig functions. Uh, I'm going to do it for a couple of them and then I'll just kind of state the others and you can figure them out on your own if you really want to see where they come from. Um, so the first one we're going to deal with is arc sine. So arc sine looks like y equals sine inverse of x. Um, so the first thing you're going to do, so this is where we start, and first thing you do is you're actually going to take the inverse of both sides. So the sine of y is equal to x. So what we did there was we took the inverse. Um, so that's a really important first step. You're going to do that for all of them. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of both sides of this with respect to x. So as I go through this one, I'm going to show more work than I do in the other ones. Um, so I'm taking the derivative with respect to x of both sides. So implicit differentiation is involved here. So the derivative of sine of y is going to be cosine of y times, by the chain rule, dy dx. And then the derivative of x is just going to be 1. So that means that dy dx is equal to 1 over the cosine of y, which is pretty much fine, except uh, that defines the derivative implicitly. Um, and there's actually enough information to go back. If I look back up top where I had sine of y is equal to x, that's enough information to um, figure out what cosine of y is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a triangle. And in this triangle, there's an angle y. And I know that the sine of y is going to be x over 1. So I'm filling that in. And then the missing side by the Pythagorean theorem is the square root of 1 minus x squared, which means that the cosine of y um, is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, but we don't write that. So I can actually rewrite this as dy dx equals um, 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, and that's the derivative of arc sine. So you're definitely going to want to memorize that. And let's uh, find a couple more. So say we deal with um, arc cosine or inverse cosine. So first thing we do is we take the inverse of both sides and we get cosine of y is equal to x. Take the derivative of both sides with respect to x, which involves uh, the chain rule and implicit. So it's negative sine of y times dy dx is equal to 1. I'm going to solve for dy dx. And this will give me the derivative implicitly but I really want to get it as a function of x. And the way I do that is I go back to the line where I have cosine of y is equal to x, and I draw a triangle with an angle y, and in this triangle, the cosine of y should be x. So I know it's x over 1 is adjacent over hypotenuse. I can find the missing side with the Pythagorean theorem, and then I can substitute back in. So dy dx is uh, negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So you might notice at this point when we did the derivative of arc sine, we got 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. The derivative of arc cosine, negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So it looks like that co thing, where co functions pick up a negative sign, is happening here as well, um, which is going to make them easier to memorize um, by a lot. Uh, let's box that and move on. So I'm going to do inverse tangent. So y equals the tan inverse of x. So we take the inverse of both sides, so tan of y is equal to x. Uh, derivative with respect to x, so secant squared of y dy dx is equal to 1. So that means that um, dy dx is 1 over the secant squared of y, uh, or you might prefer to say that's the cosine squared of y because 1 over secant is cosine. Uh, at this point I go to tan of y is equal to x and I draw a triangle. And I know that the tangent of y is x, so opposite is x, adjacent is 1. The missing side is square root of 1 plus x squared by the Pythagorean theorem. So cosine in this triangle is 1 over the square root of 1 plus x squared. But I have dy dx as cosine squared. So dy dx is going to be just 1 over 1 plus x squared. And you're going to want to memorize that as well. So, uh, so far we did sine inverse, cosine inverse, tan inverse. If you go through the process and um, find the derivative of inverse cotan, you're going to find that it's just negative 1 over 1 plus x squared. Um, so I'm not going to actually do that here, but I am going to move on and do the derivative of inverse secant. So it's the same process, but this one has a kind of tricky thing that shows up. So secant of y is equal to x, which means that um, the derivative is secant y tan y dy dx. So don't forget that dy dx, otherwise you just you won't have a derivative in there, and that'll be a problem. Equals 1. Uh, so dy dx is 1 over secant of y, tan of y, which you might be totally happy with, but a lot of people don't like using the reciprocal functions. So I'm going to rewrite it as dy dx 
is cosine of y over tan of y. Okay, so at this point, I have the derivative implicitly. I'm going to draw a triangle based on the fact that secant of y is equal to x. So I have an angle y, and then secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so it's, it's going to be... Um, Cosine would be 1 over x, so adjacent is 1, and hypotenuse is x. Um, but there's an issue here, because the hypotenuse should never be negative. It's kind of a convention that you develop in pre-calculus and carry forward. So that should have an absolute value on it to make sure that it's positive. So we're going to have to remember that, and it's a giant pain in the neck. Um, but the hypotenuse should be positive, so we put in an absolute value here. And... Um, the missing side is the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus 1, but the absolute value of x squared is actually just x squared, so we don't need the absolute value there. So we get radical x squared minus 1. So that's the big deal with inverse secant, is that absolute value that just kind of shows up. So I'm going to make my substitutions, so dy dx. So cosine is 1 over the absolute value of x, and then... Um, Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so radical x squared minus 1 over 1. We don't like that. Um, so that is the simplified version of the derivative of inverse secant. Okay, and on this next slide or page or whatever these are called in this program, uh, I've written down all of the derivatives for you. So you could screenshot that or whatever. Um, and really the key ones, there's a couple of key things to remember here. Uh, the derivatives of all the cos are negative of just the non-cos or of their cofunctions, derivatives. Um, and the derivative of inverse sine and derivative of inverse tangent come up all the time. So you definitely need those memorized. I think you should memorize all of these, um, but that's about all there is. I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.